My name is Angie and I'm from Georgia. Um, when I was 16 years old, I um, was kind of daddy's little girl and born the gifted child. Um, when I turned 16, I got a brand new car and just made the cheerleading team. Everything looked great and bright. And then I found out I was pregnant by my 18-year-old boyfriend who didn't want to be a dad, who uh, really encouraged me and even had one of his best friend's moms take me to the clinic. So we, uh, we called the clinic in, in Tennessee and they were more than glad to help me and wanted to, to get everything taken care of for me because I was a young girl and had such a <laughs> promising future. I remember going in, pulling up the clinic, there were protesters outside marching, you know, pro-life protesters, and I thought, oh, would they just give it a rest? What, you know, what is, who do they think they are? I got inside, and it was a very, very crowded waiting room, and for some reason that was comforting to me, that I knew I wasn't the only one doing it, that, uh, you know, I wasn't alone in, in the choice. Um, but the comfort soon faded. Once I got back to the room, uh, the nurse put me in a gown, and I told her, I said, you know, I think... I think I'm really not ready for this. I'd like to reschedule my appointment. She said, no, no, it's too late. You know, we, we've already given you a sedative. It, it's not really a baby anyway. So uh, the next thing I remember was the horrible vacuum. To this day, I cannot stand to hear the vacuum cleaner run. My husband says it's uh, just a way to get out of cleaning, but... <laughs> anyway, um, it still makes me sick at my stomach to hear a vacuum cleaner running. The next thing I remember, I woke up in like a makeshift dressing room, bleeding everywhere. Blood was all over the floor. And even though I wanted to tell myself it, it was okay, it wasn't wrong, in some part of my mind, when I entered that clinic, I knew I was making a mistake because I gave my older sister's name. I didn't ever want it to be traced back to me. So the nurse is calling out my sister's name when I'm waking up in the little makeshift dressing room and I'm thinking, what? You know, surely to goodness, she's not. It took me a moment to come back to reality that, oh, I'm playing my sister today. My life spun out of control after that um, with failed relationships, drugs, alcohol. I had two failed suicide attempts, one with a, a, where the gun jammed and the other where 98 Halidols just, uh, God had other plans for me and for some reason something that would kill most anybody didn't kill me because God's got a bigger purpose for me. I later um, went on to marry when I was uh, about 28, but we had a horrible marriage. We still drank and went out and partied all the time and just trying to numb it, just anything to numb that feeling. Um, about four years into our marriage, we were introduced to Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Once we accepted Him, things changed for us but not so much for me. Somewhere in my heart, I held higher standards than Christ has. I believed that He forgave me, but I still just couldn't forgive myself. Until one day, I heard a lady's testimony at Women of Worship um, who was in my same situation, but she had decided to keep her child. And that's um, when I realized I needed healing from this abortion. And so I went to the clinic uh, where I live now and got help. And I'm now uh, a full-time staff member at a non-profit crisis pregnancy center. So I will be silent no more every day.